Hi, this is Tom Casabobian, and I've got this 140 engine that uh, I'm uh, going to be selling here soon, and I thought I'd show you a little more about it. Uh, at the end of this video, I'll, I'll have a short clip showing the engine uh, running on the test bench. Uh, this is a 140 uh, engine. Its, uh, it's code is a uh, RT. Let's see if I can get that here. It's an RT code, which is uh, the code for a 66 140 stick shift uh, in a Corsa. Uh, the, uh, the engine was is, is a complete rebuild, and it, it is uh, what I call a turnkey. Uh, one, you just you shouldn't have to do anything with it; just install it and drive it. Uh, the uh, the engine started with, uh, the rebuild started with a crankcase. Uh, I had it vapor honed for cleaning instead of uh, bead blasting. Uh, bead blasting kind of changes the surface texture a little bit. Vapor honing uh, just cleans it, and so it looks like a brand new crankcase just, just as it came out of the foundry. Uh, unfortunately, you can't see it, but uh, it's, it's nice to know it's that way, uh, even though you can't see it. Uh, the the crankshaft has been turned uh, ten thousandths uh, on the mains and the rods. Uh, it is a nitrated crankshaft. It's uh, brand new grind, so uh, the, it uses uh, undersized bearings and they're new. And uh, I think it's installed. I check clearances, and for instance, the the main bearings are one and a half thousandths, and I think the uh, rods are between one and a half and two thousandths. So uh, everything is as it should be. The um, camshaft is a uh, Clark's OT20. Uh, this camshaft is uh, uh, is it has very similar timing to the uh, duration to the uh, 304 cam, except it has more lift. But the thing that's different about this cam is that the ramps are gone. Chevrolet cams have long ramps, and uh, this one. Uh, it has zero overlap. Both valves are closed at top dead center, but it has uh, significantly more lift. So this camp should give you a uh, good low end with uh, more power on top. It kind of has everything you need. The uh, cylinder heads have been tested. Uh, I've um, my the method I use is I heat up each head uh, to 450 degrees. I leave it in there for a couple hours. And I pull it out and I check the uh, the valve seats to make sure they they are are tight. I try to turn them with a special tool, and I have it mark on the uh, on each uh, uh, valve seat and uh, to make sure they will not rotate. If they don't rotate, then I know they're in good and tight. Some people say, "Well, why don't you just go ahead and change all the seats? That way, you'll know you'll have, you know." Well, that isn't necessarily the case. Uh, I, I've been testing a lot of heads. I had a, uh, a cylinder head, a 95 horse head that had deep seats in one cylinder. And uh, I heated up to 450 and the deep seats fell out and the standard the factory seats were still in there nice and tight. So there's no uh, changing uh, valve seats doesn't mean they're not going to fall out. They, they could still fall out or it depends on the type of workmanship that, uh, that was used to install them. Now. Uh, the I also had to I did some work on the uh, on the cylinder heads the uh, exhaust ports I cleaned up there's uh, there's some instruction obstructions in there and I cleaned those out and then I reshaped the combustion chambers uh, uh, to pr provide some uh, additional clearance around the valves and then I uh, I uh, 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 CC'd the heads and they are uh, they CC'd at nine. Well, with a 42,000 gasket, you'll be at 9.2 to one compression ratio. Uh, that I think you'll be okay running mid grade fuel. Uh, I don't think you'd want to run this engine on regular. Now, the, the valves, of course, are new, the uh, valve lifters and the rocker arm assemblies that's all, all new. Uh, let's see. The uh, fuel system uses a uh, uh, the standard 140 carburetors. The uh, the choke uh, diaphragms are new. Uh, of course, they're, they're totally rebuilt. All the fuel lines are new. 
uh, and uh, and ready to go. Now I, I have uh, changed the uh, fuel system on this where it's set up for uh, electric fuel pump. I don't have any confidence in mechanical pumps anymore. I've had too many failures. The last uh, brand new uh, fuel pump I use, I, it's a Delphi. Uh, and it's after running about a minute or so, gas starts squirting out of the van hole on top. And uh, that, you know, that would be a real problem if you're driving down the road and didn't know you're flooding the engine compartment with gasoline. So I'm, I'm done with uh, mechanicals. Uh, we're set up for a uh, uh, electric pump. Uh, this this fuel pump has a uh, a block uh, in place of the valve body, and uh, so it's just uh, you know fuel goes in and goes right back out again. There's no place for it to leak, uh, and so all you'll need to do is hook up an electric fuel pump. Now that's, that's not supplied, but you'll need a, a fuel pump. Uh, I usually mount those uh, right behind the fuel tank. Uh, and I'm also providing a, uh, a relay and a switch so that you can utilize the, uh, uh, the uh, low pressure uh, warning circuit to drive your pump. And, and uh, you'll need a, a, a switch to prime the engine if you haven't driven it for a while. And that's what, I'm, what I'll provide. I'll provide that hardware and the drawings to do that. Uh, now we have a... Uh, a brand new Dale flywheel. This is uh, Dave Langslather. He uh, he designed the uh, the original bolted flywheel for the Corvair, and this is one of his flywheels, and it's new. Uh, the pressure plate is heavy duty. That means it's the extra it's the extra heavy spring with the extra weight uh, on the on the uh, pressure plate, and these are both new from Clark's. Uh, pilot bushing is new. All you need to do is stick the uh, output shaft in there and, and hook it up. So uh, everything is 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 uh, pretty much ready to go. The uh, the lower shrouds, uh, of course, they're it's pretty hard to find really really nice lower shrouds. They take a beating. These are the best I could find, and they're they're really nice. Uh, and I have brand new uh, uh, bellows on there to. Uh, uh, operate the, uh, the the damper door. Uh, you'll need to put those on after you install install the engine in the car. So I think uh, that's about it. Uh, let's see. Did I mention uh, the the throttle linkage is is uh, from uh, Roger Parent. Uh, this is really really nice stuff. These guys uh, or he really does a nice job. Uh, the design's really nice, and uh, the, the hardware is excellent. It's ball-bearing stuff. It really works nice, uh, and um, you'll enjoy that. I have added a return spring for the secondaries. Uh, the, uh, the 65 style linkage doesn't use an external spring for the secondaries. So if, it, if for some reason the uh, spark plug wires got hung up on the secondary, they could stay open. So, uh, you know, it relies on the internal spring and the, and the accelerator pump well. So it's, uh, it needed some extra help. So it's, it's a very light spring. And uh, when you go into the secondaries, you'll feel it in the throttle foot. So uh, it's, it's an added feature that I think you'll, you'll enjoy. So uh, hang on for the, uh, for the uh, test run uh, on the startup and... Uh, uh, thank you very much for watching. Mm. A little trouble with the Bendix on this starter. Of course, the starter doesn't doesn't go with the uh, engine.
okay it's, it's still idling a little fast it's cold here and the chokes are on so uh let me turn the pump off so that's pretty much it uh it'll be uh, uh, uh on my uh my youtube channel uh that that channel is uh called tvk that's v as in vaughn t tvk performance and you'll see uh this video on there along with some others the the devon in the background here that's going to be for sale here very soon this is the one that went to pike's peak okay uh, that'll be it thank you for watching